We're here in Shenandoah National Park. We're investigating the crime scene of a brutal double murder that occurred back in 1996. And we're here to see if John and Carla can't get some details to maybe get the police back on track here. John and Carla are both renowned psychics with extensive experience in criminal investigations. And going into this case, they've been told absolutely nothing except that this was a double homicide. Julie and Lolly aren't the Appalachian Trail's only murder victims. Over the past two decades, there have been three other double homicides. Before starting the psychic investigation with Carla and John, I need to do some research so that I'll be able to tell whether or not they're on the right track. I'm going to meet with a local journalist who's been following this story. Based on what evidence they have, do you think that they will ever find the killer? It's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough. And I think that a man who kills that way once is going to kill probably Absolutely. again and again until he's caught. Hopefully, in some small way, we can we can contribute and get whoever did this. That'd be wonderful. Uh -huh. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. Good luck. Patrick Burns. Karen Beck-Herzog. Nice, nice to meet you. A park ranger gives me more background on the crime scene so that I can stay one step ahead of the psychics. What details can you give me about the time frame of the crime? The dog got out of its collar at some point, and some hikers found him and turned him in. And uh, do you know where where Lolly's body was, approximately? She was actually in the tent on this side, in a sleeping bag right here. You know, you look around here at these trees, and. They were the only ones that bore witness to what happened that night. Mm -hmm. These trees could talk. OK, Carla and John, we're coming up now on the location where their car was found abandoned. Our investigation kicks off where this story actually began, the parking lot where Julie and Lolly left their car before hiking into the woods. This is the area over here in front of this small tree. And the head of the trail, where they began their journey, is over this way. We're heading over to the crime scene. Without any help from me, Carla and John are going to try to make their way to the place where the bodies were discovered. They're hoping that this will help them see the crime through the victim's eyes. But we had a major snowstorm last night, which may make our job harder. I think our plan is for me to take Carla at the head of the trail, John, drive further down the road and see if you can't find the alternate entrance to the path. OK. This is sort of where myself as a paranormal investigator get to really do my thing. Up until now, it's primarily been Carla and John talking and giving their interpretations. Now I'm going to set up my gear and see what, if any, anomalous activity we can record. We're hooking up four video cameras here that have infrared night shot on them. Try field meter. What it does is measure fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field and the local static electric field. John is simply visualizing everything from their point of view. Now that was weird. What's that? There was an, an anomaly that I saw curve through the video. There was something th flew through. There it goes again. Carla? We caught an anomaly on the, on the video. OK. I don't know. There's some activity going on here. Based on the forensic evidence, police do not believe there was any sexual assault in these murders. So far, John and Carla's readings have been right on the money. Now we have to dig deeper and see if we can open some new doors. John and Carla are now searching for any psychic clues that could help identify Julie and Lolly's killer. I'm very interested in John's description of the killer because police do have a suspect. Daryl David Rice, currently in prison for attacking another woman in the same park one year after Julie and Lolly were murdered. Police know that Rice was in the park around the time of the murders, but there's no forensic evidence tying him to the crime. The face John has seen just doesn't match the prime suspect. While John and Carla disagree on the killer's identity, they seem to be visualizing the same murder weapon. Carla believes that someone besides the killer knows where the murder weapon is. If that person ever comes to light, 
then there's a good chance of linking the killer to the crime. Although John and Carla don't envision the same killer, they've described so many details of the crime accurately. We can only hope that the police are able to find some of our information useful and ultimately find out who killed Lolly and Julie.